Hi again, it's Lewis Wing, your continuous improvement coach from Flow Plus. In today's module, we'll be comparing the traditional with the lean way of thinking. As we learn about the different approaches, please take the time to think about how it applies to your current workplace or different management approaches that perhaps you have experienced in the past. If you haven't already, I would suggest printing the training notes to follow along with each module so that you can annotate your own thoughts and experiences as you go along, which is a really effective way of creating the neural connections in your brain that help develop your learning and your memory. So let's begin. By the end of this module, you'll be capable of comparing a lean managerial style with a traditional approach. You'll know the different approaches to developing solutions, and you'll understand the lean way of process improvement. Let's compare the traditional command and control approach with the lean way of thinking. This will help you make decisions later that align with lean thinking and hopefully avoid falling into some of the traps that are ingrained in the traditional ways that we work. Firstly, let's look at the role of managers and how they play in the two different types of organisation. Firstly, traditional managers take a I know best attitude where they make decisions by themselves in isolation without consulting and involving the people that are actually doing the process every day. Traditional managers take a narrow tunnel vision view in a silo mentality and make decisions only thinking about the immediate impact it will have on them and their team and not the wider company and the stakeholders that are all impacted. Just like was the case with mass production, managers would be very results and output focused, working each team member as hard as they could, cracking the whip and taking a command and control approach. This would lead to a strong blame culture where mistakes and problems would be brushed under the carpet and hidden. To add to these problems, there was little regard for quality. The priorities were to work as hard as you could keep busy all the time and produce as quickly as possible. That's what managers' roles were, to keep people busy. Let's compare these traits with the lean approach. A lean manager involves everyone impacted in the decision-making process, seeking advice from team members and respecting their opinions. This way, decisions are made as a team and the likelihood of improvement sticking is much higher. A lean manager looks at the bigger picture and takes a holistic systems view of the business, accounting for all the stakeholders that might be impacted by the decision. Improvements are celebrated and rewarded, not just output and performance, with an attitude that moving in the right direction is more important than just the performance. In a lean organisation like Toyota, it is okay to not be busy all the time. Each employee's work responsibilities are very clearly defined and there is no pressure to appear busy by filling free time with additional tasks. All this does is hide improvements and make problems bigger. Instead, if you are in production, it is perfectly acceptable to just stand still with your hands behind your back while you wait for work. The last thing they ever want is overproduction, the worst waste of all, so operators will never carry on working ahead of schedule. To add to this, if a problem is ever spotted, Toyota empower all staff to stop the production line and alert a supervisor immediately. Instead of repeatedly firefighting the same problems or creating workarounds, they dedicate the time to collect the facts, investigate the root causes and devise permanent solutions so that the problem never has to be tackled again. I've had the pleasure of seeing this firsthand at Toyota and they really do treat every problem, however small it is, very seriously and are willing to spend a lot of time resolving them once and for all. As they know in the long run, they'll save time and also it makes a huge positive impact to their company culture. One of the most dramatic differences between the traditional and the lean approach is the attitude towards improvement and how to improve. Traditional companies typically prioritise large, technical 
and often incredibly expensive projects as being the silver bullet and answer to all their problems. This may be a new system that is just about to be introduced and by just about, it's probably been just about for the last two years. These large projects or amazing new machines that can do everything are almost always less beneficial as they were predicted. New systems are overridden with poor processes and then big new machines break down or people simply aren't trained properly to use them. The lean approach is to keep things simple and go for the low cost option if available. We'll talk about this a lot later in the course, but small, simple machines actually have many benefits over all-in-one, big, complex machines. For example, they're easy to train people on, they are simple to repair, they take up less room, and they have less things that can go wrong and cost less money. But companies always have and always will want to get their hands on the shiniest new piece of technology whether that be a machine or new software. The last comparison I want to make is the difference in approach to efficiency. Lean teaches us that typically 80% of an entire process is non-value adding and the remaining 20% is value adding. That is why we focus on removing waste and not making the value adding part faster. This concept is extremely important to understand and something that is almost always in the exam, so please make sure that you do properly understand it. The mindset goes something like this. In order to build a cupboard quickly, I need to upgrade my manual screwdriver to an electric one, and instead of having the instructions on paper, I want them on an iPad, so I can scroll down instead of having to turn the pages of the paper. This really is how many companies think, they try and throw technology at every problem. The lean way is a mindset of, when building a cupboard, I spend 80% of my time on non-value added tasks like looking for the right screw. And the time I spend with the screwdriver is so small that speeding it up will barely help. I'll get more benefit from color coding the screws to prevent me making mistake and speeding up the searching process than I would by investing in new equipment that focuses on speeding up the value add part of the process anyway. So please remember this. Lean focuses on minimizing waste and not speeding up the part of the process that adds value. For example, if you can reduce the amount of waste in a process by 50%, which is often really possible, you'll make a much bigger impact when compared with speeding up the value add part by 50%. And that finalizes the comparison between traditional and the lean thinking approach. As always, please apply what you have learned and before the next module, think about and write down how you think your current workplace or somewhere you have worked in the past compares across the different factors and how they can improve. In the next module, we'll revisit the concept of Gemba. Recapping the three learning objectives can be best done by revisiting the last slide. Lean managers involve others and encourage problems to be raised. Quick, low cost and simple solutions are devised and processes are improved by reducing the waste, not speeding up the value adding part of the process. If you remember these three comparisons, it will really help guide you to make improvements with a lean mindset.